If I may, I'll move on now to uh, Julie Middleton and Tash Barnes, who are going to talk about the work that's happening in the South Downs National Park with OnePlanet.com. Over to you, Julie. Thanks, Sarah Jane. Now, from one extreme to the other, uh, from talking about actually seeing lots of activity on the ground, this this presentation is really about um, a piece of work that I've been doing with One One Planet around a specific task in the local nature recovery strategy regs and guidance so those of you who are right in the weeds of this stuff will know that one of the things we have to do in these lnrs processes is to understand what is in existing regulate uh, existing plans and strategies that cover our patch now i am the lm operates sort of lnp for sussex and our patch covers two lnrs areas so west sussex and east sussex but we are working on them together and i for some reason i don't entirely know how <laughs> volunteered myself to actually do a review of all the plans and strategies at the beginning of this process. And I know everyone's doing this differently, but we decided to do this. And I was very familiar with One Planet and decided to ask them to uh, work alongside me in this to just try a few things out. So before I get too much into that, I'm going to ask Tash to join us on the screen and to share her screens. So Tash works for One Planet and will start by just giving us a bit of background as to what one planet is um and then i'll take over and explain how we've applied it to this part of the lns process sure thanks julie um i don't know if everyone can see my screen yes I've got yeah it's working okay, yeah. Great. cool i'm not that used to teams yet so <laughs> just like learning as i go um okay so yeah i'll just give you a quick background um basically one planet is a tech company um, but we're working basically on the principle that sustainability is all about understanding interconnectedness um, and leaning into that. So uh, you can see from the diagram, like, I'm sure <laughs> this is all obvious to everyone, but uh, if we're driving fuel, like combustion cars, and we're driving the fossil fuel industry and the microplastics in the sea are coming from the same petrol chemicals, um, which are ending up and impacting our health. So um, yeah, health, well-being, nature, carbon we're, we're basically trying to tackle the multi uh, crises all at once um, as they compound each other um the way that we do this it's not just like a random idea it's built on 35 plus years of um environmental work experience um sustainability experience um but the way we do this is through using tech um to create a common language which we can put any strategy policy plan um basically yeah anything like that into um the language we use is called oais and that's uh, made up of outcomes so goals or objectives what you want to achieve which are represented by little circles um actions are the things you're doing in order to try and achieve said outcomes which are little hexagon a's and then indicators are your kpis your measurables um that you're tracking progress with what that means is then any plan or strategy can speak to each other and you can understand how they work in relation to each other um, which is obviously a huge problem um, in like miscommunication and uh, if we don't have that capacity to understand between strategies. Um, so we're currently working with South Downs National Park. We have been uh, for a while now, started off doing a project um, with them in April, which is a three month pilot funded by Innovate UK um, around net zero specifically. But because we take a whole systems approach, we looked at um, yeah, well-being, travel, um, nature recovery, and so on as part of that. Uh, and now we're also working with the South Downs National Park Authority, um, specifically with their partnership management plan, because they can't deliver everything they're statutorily required to deliver without significant input from their partners and um, stakeholders. So helping them manage that. From the South Downs work, um, key outcomes were we created this dynamic ecosystem plan, which I'll show you live in a second. But um, what that allowed us to do was create like a shared vision for the South Downs National Park as an area at landscape scale, which stakeholders agreed on, um, coordinate key activity like amongst stakeholders so they could understand and learn from each other, um, which also facilitated knowledge exchange, collaboration and um, easier finding of opportunities to achieve like shared outcomes. Um, now we're moving, uh, we, well, the work with Julie and other work I'm currently um, doing with One Planet has moved 
uh, away from more like net, net zero focused and into nature recovery. Um, so with Julie, we've been doing this uh, East and West Sussex LNRS pilot because uh, it's a responsible authority which joins the two counties. Um, Don't we to jump in here? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so I saw a presentation on how the National Park had been mapping all the different uh, plans and strategies that exist in their spatial area um, for net zero. And I thought, oh my goodness, this is, feels very analogous to, is that the right word? Uh, it feels almost identical to the problem statement we would have around LNRSs. In other words, an LNRS is going to be a strategy that sets out lots of possible opportunities for people to deliver things on the ground. But actually the county councils themselves aren't going to be delivering an awful lot of them. Um, and it's going to be delivering an LNRS is going to be about understanding how everyone can collaborate and work together underneath that strategy to actually achieve things on the ground. And they also have a specific task to draw um, an understanding of what's going on already through these existing plans together to try and help understand it. So, and certainly in Sussex, there wasn't, wasn't very much of a strong understanding of what those shared outcomes for nature recovery look like at a local level. In other words, do we understand, you know, really? what the water companies are doing for nature recovery we kind of do do we know what they're doing where they're doing it not really same thing about we have two big um we have three sorry national landscapes national parks we've got chichester harbour the high wheels south downs national park they've all got their own sort of plans and strategies and we've got all the stuff that's been done at the county council scale so we thought we'd have a go at um thinking about how this kind of technology could help us understand what's going on so um we persuaded the responsible authorities to give us a little bit of pilot funding to do this alongside the actual LNRS sort of work that I'm doing for them. So next slide, please, Tav. Um, I've covered this really already, that the, one of the reasons is that the LNRS will be the strategy. Now, its delivery will, re will require um, a collaboration across multiple organisations and they have a small role. And they, the other very interesting thing about, about it, for those of you in responsible authorities will understand that, that you've been given funds to prepare a strategy you've not been given any funding to establish a system or process for understanding how to monitor this as we go along to track to track progress etc except that when the review is finally announced in five to eight years time you'll be expected to include in your next lnrs an understanding of what has happened since the first one so there's an absolutely critical gap here that um, means we need some way of understanding what is happening, who's planning to do what, and how do we monitor and pro progress <laughs> against that. So um, just keep that in mind as we work through this, because there, there may be a way through One Planet. Thanks, Tash. Next slide. Um, so okay, what, I'm, sorry, I'm just going to... Are you going to jump onto live demo? Yeah, I'm going to live demo. I've just made some slides. Okay, so I'm going to remove this mic. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> this mic. Oh, it pairs like... Anyway, so what we did, we had a limited budget, so we decided we would take up to 20 plans and strategies that are relevant in the Sussex space, and we would try to map them in a way that made sense from an LNRS perspective. So you can see they're sort of listed here. We've got quite a few of them are protected landscapes, national park plans, um, Chichester Harbour, you can see their management plan, the high wheeled AOMB draft management plan, the South Downs management plan, but also other plans and strategies of theirs that are relevant to do with things like climate change and 25 year environment strategy from Southern Water. Um, and we started to think about how could we um, build, if you like, an LNRS framework within which this makes sense. And one of the things we did do was we had a look at the EIP, the Environmental Improvement Plan, the government's national 25 year environment plan. It has a sort of really a, a useful framework in it of, of goals and we looked at those and then we took one of the plans that we've been working on which was the high wheeled AOMB management plan and we started to map it into the system. Tash are you going to go to a slide or are you going to? Oh yeah I forgot there to share. So um so this is kind of what it's starting to look like and this isn't perfect by any means but you'll see in the middle there's a little square and that's essentially your starting point so Sussex LNRS and out of that become come various spokes on these wheels and essentially they they go to the main overarching theme areas so you would have on the blue on the right hand side there marine habitat restoration um you would have in the bottom terrestrial habitat creation restoration 
over on the left, you have climate change action. So that's where all our nature-based solutions for climate come in, things to do with uh, natural flood management, suds, urban temperature regulation, etc. Further up on the left, we've got um, nature-based solutions in relation to water. At the top, we've got stuff to do with biosecurity. We've got lots of sort of enabling and important overarching stuff around sustainable resource use, timber production, food production, fish stocks. We can link to that and find out what people's plans and strategies have in them in relation to those we've got species. So we started to try to build in the various components that an LNRS might look like, look at. And then what One Planet allows us to do is to go into these and find out whose plans and strategies are working in, the, in that space and understand what their actions are if you drill down into something that you're particularly interested in. Um, and we'll show you how that works in a second. And that's all the categories there on the right hand side that we've we've mapped in there. And you can filter by any one of these at any point in time. So you could have a look at woodland, for example, on its own and just bit this, this uh, thing will spin around in front of your eyes for a bit and while it loads. Um, there we go. So if you clicked on woodland at the moment, because we've not got ev all, all plants and strategies in there, but this will show you all the different plans on the left hand side that mention woodland creation, for example, as an outcome. So that's one planet language and an LNRS language that might be a priority. Um, and then the little actions you can see where there may be actions, we might call those measures in LNRS speak, um, which are activities that people are planning to do in relation to woodland creation, for example, or woodland management. So it allows you to click in to see what's happening and then you could click on that and find out more information by it. You could certainly find out whose action is that. And we, it, it's cut and paste across the information from the plan and strategy to give you more information about it. So that's sort of the power of that element of the tool. And you can imagine if you had every partnership and project in your county linked in to some of this stuff, you'd begin to see, you'd begin to see the power of it in the sense that you have in one place the ability to see just who's interested in this stuff, who's already working in it. And then um, there is, there's the possibility of joining people up a lot more across what they're already interested in doing. Um, um, I'm just going to jump in here and say yeah. we can also create um, reports about these key outcomes from our ecosystem plan. So these are what Jodie talked to us through a second ago. We just thought we'd demo woodland, but mm. um, but say I wanted to create a report of activity um, around woodland I just click here generate pdf and then um, get something like this automatically generated you can see all the activity you can filter what you want in and out of the plan so it saves um, saves a lot of mental yeah, labor it takes a little bit of getting your head around what all the different things mean but um I think I think this for me is um one of the most powerful things about it certainly is being able to drill in it under particular outcomes or priorities and understanding who are, the pe who are the people in here that are interested in that and what are they doing? What are they planning to do? Um, what was the next slide, Tasha? Um, You're on your, on your live screen, so. Yeah, uh, lenses we need to speak about. Oh yeah, well, we could show what the, um, so, so the EIP lens is interesting. So One Planet has the ability to create different frameworks through which you can look at the same thing. So if we wanted to look at what we've mapped through the lens of the environmental improvement plan, that would automatically give you that framework on the screen. So that's its main goals. It would organize it by its main goals. And then you could start to see, well, what's going on uh, in Sussex within this um, system underneath each of these different goals. So thriving nature and wildlife is their main big relevant goal. Um, and it has different parts to it. And you can you can go into that and see exactly what's happening under, um, under that within the, the Sussex ecosystem <laughs> confusing language for something that's to do with nature recovery so that's what a lens is and you can create different ways of looking at things um so i know i'm just conscious of time so i think we were wanting to talk a little bit about impact weren't we and potential mm. for this tash so certainly yeah. um oh, sorry you, you can search you can search in tabular form so i've had a few colleagues say to me my mind doesn't work like that mind maps forget it doesn't work for me but I'm a columns person, I'm a spreadsheet person, and you can actually look at all of this information in a tabular format as well, mm. which is quite helpful. And the way it's set up, you've got different um, ways that you can do that. And this was just if you search, this is showing the search function. So you can type something in like river, yeah. and that will just initially allow you to see 
any anywhere uh, in any plan where a keyword like that might be mentioned and you'll be able to find out which planet is whose planet is and what it actually says in there yeah. about, about the keyword. So um, just, yeah yeah so just in terms of learning um it was very very obvious to me that you cannot put every single plan and strategy into the, this kind of tool this is really most helpful for those sorts of plans and strategies that are, have a delivery focus so in other words they're about objectives and actions outcomes and actions rather than policies if that makes sense um but we have i think learned quite a lot just playing around with this thinking about um what outcomes are how our existing organizations working in sussex are playing a role in helping to deliver some of this and, and what some of the language <laughs> looks like and there's a real struggle trying to map some of the language across but i think it has been very useful but um most of the big players on the ground we've got wheel to waves that's the w2w there big chalk wildlife trust and others are not actually publishing documents with all of this fine detail in it but one of the other strengths of one planet is that you can sit down with an organization and they can build their own plan into this just from an understanding of what their priorities are and what they are wanting to do under under particular outcomes and we have that up our sleeves is something we're going to be doing in Sussex with a couple of projects mm -hmm. on the ground to test that at that scale. Okay, next slide, please. So impact and potential, just very quickly, Tash, just move on again. Um, uh, oh, no, don't, sorry, go back. I was expecting to talk into that space. Um, so, so really about impact, there was one or two really key, key things I wanted to say. So we don't necessarily have money at the moment from our RAs to keep this work going. This is a proof of concept just to have a look to see whether this could be useful for LNRS. But I think, if I, as I've already said, when we have an LNRS in place and we understand what all those shared outcomes that are that have been worked through your system, I see real potential in mapping it and, and sitting down with all the, all the various delivery bodies underneath and understanding how everybody will work together under those and using it as a way to engage conversations with people around, you know, which are the outcomes you want to work on, which are the priorities, which are the measures. And, and mapping into that so that's one definite place of impact the other one is as you may be aware or not the lnrs when it is published will be a static document we've been told it has to be static its maps have to remain static and it cannot be changed until it is reviewed which is a massive problem in my mind but if we have something sitting underneath it its delivery plan or, or something underneath that is capturing all the dynamism of what is happening and what is constantly coming forward it's new partnerships new initiatives then it can be captured in a tool a bit like this. And at the end of it, we've got something that, that is has moved and has remained dynamic over the period of the LNRS, if that makes sense, but is but is but but exists within that framework that's set by the LNRS, which is those top level shared, shared outcomes, priorities. Um, so that's really, that would be my main thing. And then I think also that it, every single of the 48 areas will have a similar, similar context, a similar framework, similar issues, and it very potentially could be applied equally well across any of the LNRS areas, I think, probably. Right, last, over to you again, Tash, for the last. You've got other bits and pieces of work you're doing in this that are relevant, I think. Yeah, so, um, oops, there's my note to self. Oops. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're working with Horsham um, District Council currently um, on a three year contract, I believe, so long term um and they've got a, a project called wilder horsham so we're actually looking at uh, applying our built uh ecosystem plan which julie and i've showed you um with our key like lnrs outcomes and to see how many of those the wilder horsham district strategy is actually achieving um and it will be a sort of test bed of like a real project for nature recovery that's already ongoing to see how that's actually contributing to an lnrs um, with the wild ooze, that's the ooze valley. Um, it's a similar project I was just reading about today. Mm. Um, actually, and that's lots of nature-based solutions in that. So that that I mean, both of them are engaged with that, but wilder ooze particularly around lots of natural flood management and things. Mm. So they're both both projects on the ground that are emerging, and this is going to be a way of helping them build a plan. Really, on the yeah, because the wild abortion district. Um, project is an ongoing project but it doesn't actually have an existing plan like they've done the project without a but like strike. like many in the space that's because we work opportunistically so it has broad aims and things it wants to achieve but it's about where 
people are willing to do them. So it's 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 an a organic <coughs> delivery approach. Huh? So, Fantastic, thank you. Is uh, is that um is that are we nearly there or have you? Are yeah, there that's it. also just mentioned I'm working. Uh, we're working with Flag yeah. Farming and Wildlife Advisory Group, um, basically to bring all of these bullet points of stakeholders together, um, around. And that's so for the LNRS for Somerset. So specific yeah. LNRS piece of work, isn't it? So yeah, it's actually bringing in green finance as well and and working with farmers a lot. So on that. Um, I'm happy to speak to anyone about that if you'd like more info. Fabulous. Time. Thank you very much, both of you. That's that's really helpful.